Hey, how's that for a view, eh? I'm Paula Froelich. Take a journey with me to explore the unknown and discover the unexpected. This is Abroad Abroad. The adventure starts now. I've been to Australia a couple times, but one place that's always eluded me until now is its iconic natural landmark, Uluru. My friend and local tour guide, Ryan, hooked me up. Thanks for bringing me out here. This is insane. It's finally made it, eh? Uluru is the largest sandstone monolith in the world. In other words, a ginormous rock. But to the traditional Aboriginal owners, the Anahu, it means so much more. Uluru is a very spiritual place for the Anahu people. And, uh, you know, we have a lot of people coming here every year to experience the Aboriginal culture. 400,000 people a year come here. Oh. It's the third biggest tourist attraction in Australia. 400,000 and one. And one, yeah. One special one. <laughs> And why is this so sacred to them? Ah, oh, this is where their ancestors walked. Although the Anahu are proud to share Uluru with tourists, at one point in time, it wasn't even theirs to share. And this place became a national park in 1958, which sounds fabulous, but it actually wasn't. They pinched the land from the Anahu and they moved them on. They thought they were disrupting progress out here. But the Australian government has since returned the land back to the Anahu, and today, Uluru is a duly listed World Heritage Site. Do people still climb up it? They do. Unfortunately, Why do people still do it if they know that it bothers the Anahu people so much? Central Australia for a long time was marketed as a destination to come and climb the rock. So when they gave them their land back in 85, you know, 80, 90% of our guests climbed the rock and it's taking a long time to change the focus. But trust me, you do not want to climb Uluru. For one thing, the best view is from the ground. And with over 200 injuries and 36 deaths from climbing attempts, it can be incredibly dangerous not to mention insulting to the Anahu. You know, up there, there's no water, there's no shelter, there's no food. This is our idea. We have to conquer everything. Since climbing Uluru isn't the safest option for sightseeing, local tourism companies have set up alternative ways to view it, from camel treks to helicopter rides, or my personal favorite, on the back of a motorcycle. So, Polar, I think your ride's here. Oh, yeah. So yeah, the camel thing, been there, done that. But when I heard I could see Uluru on the back of a Harley, uh, heck yeah, bring on the leather jacket. How'd you know my head size was so big? <laughs> Bit of an estimate. <laughs> Since Uluru's base is almost six miles around, a motorcycle ride is a great way to catch a glimpse of this giant rock at every angle. Once we got to the other side, I had to stop and catch my breath and take in the view. Oh my gosh, wow. Hey, how's that for a view, eh? At over 1,000 feet high, Uluru is massive. And what I was seeing was just the tip. Wait, so it's like an iceberg. It's like a ginormous right. mountain iceberg yep. in the desert. It's like seeing the tip of an iceberg come jutting out of, the, out of the ground. With the sun going down, the flies made an appearance. And I knew it was time to jet. As we rode back through the sunset, the rock changed colors from a fiery orange to blue, then a majestic purple. I'd finally made it to Uluru, and it was well worth the wait. On the next episode of Abroad Abroad, now that I've seen Uluru, I visit its tricky twin, Fuluru.